Hello everyone, Chris Petrie here. Hey, I really appreciate you coming by. We're having a great time here. We're doing watercolor occasional cards. We're doing a beautiful flower painting in a vase on a beautiful table with some tablecloth ideas. You're going to have just a great time doing this painting. So we're just going to cover here the first part is just looking at the finished product, let's say. And this is the front of the occasional card here, so you can kind of see we have the occasional card here. I'm going to show you how you make your card, what size to make it. Um, you can adjust the size too. You're the artist. You're going to decide what kind of card you're going to have as far as the size goes and so forth. You know, if you want to spin it around and make it a landscape card, this happens to be a portrait um, card where the card is sitting up in a portrait uh, format, which is upright like this, vertical. So we sometimes talk about that on the channel here. You can create paintings in a vertical fashion, which is portrait, or you can make, make your paintings in a horizontal fashion, like a landscape uh, format. So this is a vertical format, a portrait format, and we're doing some flowers. Simple as that. We'll show you how to create this wonderful occasional card. You can fill in a message on the front of your card. It could be anything. Happy birthday, congratulations, um, happy whatever holiday it might be. It's up to you or just thanks. Maybe you're thanking somebody for something. They gave you a gift. They gave you uh, a hand with something to help you. Whatever it is, you can create occasional cards for anything. Um, it's up to you. You can make them ahead of time so that this way maybe you can save a few uh, dollars with going out and buying cards. You can make your own cards. I do that often. I make my cards uh, at home for holidays and um, you know, things like that, birthdays and for my family, for my uh, co-workers and friends. So this is the um, card we're going to do here. I'll zoom in just a little bit so you can see the painting a little closer. So it's just a simple vase on a table with a tablecloth and uh, some gorgeous uh, colors in here, light, shadow. We're going to show you how to get your light and shadow set up in your painting so you have your shadows on the right and your light on the left over here, and you'll be all set, okay? So, we'll be right back and we'll start up with our drawing and how to create the card, what measurements to um, create, and how to fold your card and get it all set up and how to tape it down to your working table. And then from there, it's pretty much just a straightforward watercolor painting. And uh, we'll see you in just a second, okay? Be right back. All right, everyone, we just saw the finished painting. I should say rather the finished uh, occasional card. These are uh, fun uh, compositions to do for occasional cards. So you can create your own um, watercolor occasional cards. Very simple. You would just trim down a piece of paper. I'll give you the uh, dimensions of this one here so we can kind of see how we uh, got to this size card. It's a, a, like a medium-sized card. It's not extremely large, but it's, you know, kind of like just right, just like a medium-sized card. So basically I have my ruler here, and I'm just going to kind of look at it and say it's uh, 11 by 7. So it's 11 by 7, and it was a larger sheet that I trimmed in half. So this is a trim down from a larger sheet, and it winds up being 11 11 across this way by 7, and then I fold it in half. So that's all I did was I took the paper and just folded it once like this and made a crease on it like so. And that's my card right there. And then what you do is we, we're going to create a painting on the front of the card. And then once you have the painting on the front of the card completed, then you can open it up and then you can do your um, message inside of it. You know, dear so-and-so, happy birthday, whatever it is. You create your occasional card. It's a happy holidays. What whatever you might like to create, you can create. All you could create really dozens of these for friends, family, coworkers. Um, you can create them ahead of time. You can make them for the holidays. So you might make a whole bunch for uh, a certain holiday that's coming up in six months. You have plenty of time. You can make a, a dozen or two dozen of these, and they, and they're just great. I mean, you're going to have a custom watercolor painted onto a card and then you have your own personal message inside you know thank you so much for 
uh, so and so for this, and you know, you know, whatever it is, your friend, your coworker, so on and so forth, your family member. So now what we would do is we just take the paper and just simply fold it in half, and then we set it down onto our work work table here. And again, you saw the finished. Uh, card, the face of the card in the beginning, so we're just picking up where we left off. We just discussed that a little bit of how it looks and so forth. So I have two kinds of tapes. I have um, a uh, painter's tape. You can find it at any big box store in the painting section where they have all the gallons of paint for people that, that paint. So you go into the paint section of your big box stores. You can even order it online. And you just take this wide tape. We're going to make the bottom of this card a little wider where we tape this. This way we can put our message on the bottom, like whatever the message might be for a happy holiday, a happy birthday, uh, a get well card, whatever it is. We just put that larger bit of tape on the bottom. And then we just take our normal um, one inch tape, drafting tape, and we just go around it this way. And that's all. that. And we're just going to go around the other three sides, like so. So we just created ourselves a picture frame around the paper, and then we'll do our pencil drawing. Now for this, we're going to do just a fun, like some flowers here. Let's try some flowers. So I'll make a vase here, maybe on a table. So here's the table. Just a little bit of table across the back here. Maybe only about a quarter of the way. So if you have half here, three quarters, one quarter. So I'm kind of dividing my paper into quarters. One quarters, two quarters equals a half, three quarters, and then one full. We could say if this was an inch, it's a quarter inch, a half inch, three quarters of an inch, one inch. Or in this case, it might be one inch, two inch, three inch, four inch. Just so we have it in fourths, like that. And so the first fourth is the table. And then we'll just kind of sketch in a little... We'll sketch in a, a vase. So I'm going to make the vase like this. It's got sort of a ball shape on the bottom. And then it goes up like so. And then it's a beautiful vase going this way here. Like this. Like that. And then there's a handle on it like so. And a handle on this side too, like so. And this one might come down a little further this way. Maybe this, maybe it's turned just a touch the other way. That's fine. Either way we do it is good. And then we're just going to put some flowers in this. So we're just going to have some flower shapes. And I think the best thing to do is just we're going to paint. We're going to paint the shapes of the flowers in. So we're just going to get kind of a kind of an idea of an outline of the f bouquet of flowers here, and that's fine, and that's good. Okay, and then maybe we could, let's, maybe we'll do some, we'll do some flower shapes here and there, just to give us some, Let's keep it real loose, real fun. So we have our table completed, our vase completed here.
or flower shapes. Good. And some stems and we're all set. And there's a little bit of a background maybe here on the hub. I think we'll keep the background very, very mild and mellow. We'll just have the basic main star of the show is the vase and the flowers. And uh, I think that should be fine. And again, we're going with the flow here, having a good time. And uh, that's the main thing with watercolors. Have fun with it. Uh, just treat each time you do a painting or you do an occasional card or whatever it is you're doing, just have fun with it. You, you try your best you can each time and you learn something each time maybe. Maybe each time you're doing a painting you're learning something new, like how to handle a certain color a certain way or maybe how your washes are kind of going on the paper and how you need to add a little less water or maybe you need to add a little more water. You might be using too much paint. It all depends. But you just keep learning as you go. Each time you do a painting, you're just really subconsciously learning about the medium as you go. So always remember, the about, remember that about watercolor. is It's really a medium where you kind of learn a lot of things intuitively. So it kind of like in the back of your mind, you're always picking up things that you don't even realize as you're painting. And the more time you put in, the more paintings you do, you're going to get better and better and better at it. No question about it, because it is a more of a slow process of learning how the feel of watercolor handles the paints, the water, the drying times. Is it hot out? Is it cold where you're painting? Is it hot where you're painting? All these things affect your watercolors, so it takes a while, but once you start to get a feel for, for it, you'll, you'll actually really realize that there's a lot going on at one time when you're painting, and after a while you kind of get used to it, and you say, yeah, it's really hot out. It's summertime right now. Uh, yeah, my paintings are, you know, my paint is drying really fast on the paper. So I got to be careful when I'm doing my washes or if it's cooler out and it's the winter time and maybe the room you're working in or you might be in a, a space where it's a little cooler, then you'll say, oh, wow, I have more time to work on my washes because it's a little cooler. It's not drying that fast. So you learn all these little uh, tidbits of information. Does that make sense as you go? So there's a lot of nuances you'll learn as you just practice. So that's why I always say repetition is the mother of skill. The more you repeat the process, repeat the practicing, repeat the paintings, you'll learn a lot, a tremendous amount. Don't get discouraged. You will get good at it. It just takes time. So don't be hard on yourself. But if you're only practicing like once a month, that's not going to get you some good progress. You have to work on it like, you know, a little bit every day or maybe, you know, Every couple days or so, try to sketch as much as you can and draw. Practice your drawing skills. That's always a good thing. Every, you know, 10, 15 minutes a day, you always hear me say that. And then, too, painting. Maybe you practice your drawing during the week, and then on the weekend you do your painting. So if you're painting every weekend a couple hours, you're going to definitely make some good progress. Um, but, again, if you're only going to paint, like, once every couple months, you know, picking up the brushes every couple months, it's not going to be such a great progress for you. So you always have to remember that you do have to put in some of that practice time and really work at it um, to get some progress. But you will make progress as you go, and you'll see it as you go. So I just always want to encourage everybody, just keep sticking with it. Practice a little bit as much as you can, whatever your schedule allows. But if you do consistently practice, you will get consistently better. It's no question about it. Every hour of practice or every 10, 15 minutes you put in, you'll be 15 minutes better. Okay? All right. We'll be right back. We'll start our painting in just a second. Okay. We're getting back started again. Let's get right into our painting. So we're going to... Um, I will change out my water. I always have a... Uh, <clears throat> fresh water in my water bucket. You can use a sponge next to your water bucket so when you rinse off your brush you can tap a little bit of water off your brush. I also use a tissue. You hold a tissue in your hand, in your left hand, and you dry off a little bit of water on your tissue too if you want. And that always helps too if you have the tissue. You can grab it quick and blot up something if it's something gets out of control. Like if a wash gets out of control, you already have your tissue here. You can grab it quick and blot a couple times if you have to. Just a good uh, practice to have. A good technique to have is... So, um, let's get our 
I think we're going to do some green here. Let's do some green, sap green, right? And what else are we going to have here? Let's do some French ultramarine blue. So we'll have some French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, sap green. We'll sort of mix a nice dark. like that. So we mixed our three colors, sap green, French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and then we're going to make our vase, that color, and we're going to pretend the light is coming from the left. So let's make our light insignia. It's always good to just keep in mind where the light's coming from, so we'll make our light insignia over here, like this, like that. We'll make our light insignia. I'll zoom in a little bit if I can here. There we go. So this will be a little darker over here. And so we'll just start getting in our darks for our vase. There we go. And then we have a dark here. Okay, I used a pretty large brush there. Let me work it down to a smaller brush, a number four Da Vinci Maestro um, travel brush. So what I'll do is I'll rinse off my brush, dry it off on the... Uh, add a little bit of warm and cool everywhere. So I'm adding some yellow ochre to this and I rinse off the brush, dry off the paint and this way we can add a little we'll leave a little bit of light on the uh, the vase like that Okay, and then we're going to do some, this is the more decorative part, the handles on the vase, like that. And then we have some more, and again, let's do some, some fun painting here. We're not getting too bogged down with trying to get every little detail in there. Let's try to have fun here and we're going to do some darks in here. So use all the paint we have here already mixed since we're already in the flow of using the same colors. Let's do that. And then we'll, uh, let's see, we have um, some shadows over here, so let's do some shadows on the wall. We'll keep this a really nice limited palette. Okay, now we will get some we're going to have some center of flowers here and there. Let's do a few of those. And you can see we're just having fun here. Um, if we can kind of paint around some of these 
petals of the flowers. And I try to do maybe a little bit of a star pattern here, like so, just to kind of get a couple of lines of uh, interest going. And uh, maybe a little bit of, let's get some of the pinkish colors in here too. Okay, so we are moving right along here. We're getting in some really nice some greens. So these are some greens here. Again, have fun with this. Don't s sweat the details. You're going to have a couple splashes here and there, like that. And I think the more you can leave this um, under finished, you're going to enjoy your painting, and you're going to think to yourself, "Wow, under finishing paintings is really fun." So I'm going to put a little cerulean blue here and there. And it's good to, uh, if you have tape around your composition or your card, it's good to get a little bit of a darker wash, if you can imagine, around the uh, edges of your tape, because then that gives you more of a, a border for yourself. And then you can go in and do some... You put some, some reds in there. If it goes a little bit out of control, blot it up or add some darks. If something goes wrong and you added too much of a high intensity color, well, you just go in and do some darks there. So that's where you can do some like that. You can do some darks and disguise is maybe an issue you might have with something. And you just go around some of the flower shapes and maybe you can create some sh flower shapes in there. And if you do that, I think you'll see it does tend to look good if you can get in some flower shapes. And... Uh, And again, I added some red and some blue, cerulean blue. And then maybe we'll do a little tablecloth idea, maybe some lines from a, on a tablecloth here. Like that. And maybe some and then you have your shadow back here And that should be fine. Let's not overwork this. We have the light coming from this side, so we... And that's good. And 
and we'll make our background here a little to make it stand out from the table. So that's always good to do that. And that is fine. We have completed our painting. You can add a little more, maybe some, uh, if you want to kind of downplay the white paper a little bit, you can do that. You just add some more. Add some more, uh, but leave some whites of the paper in the center of the uh, in the center of the paper, and again. That's the shadow on the right side from the light coming this way. And that is it. That's as simple as that. You know, you have some fun, you put some flower shapes in there. Um, you make a vase, a nice uh, interesting looking vase for your flowers, a little bit of a tablecloth on a table, and trust me, that looks just perfect. You're all set. You have yourself a gorgeous occasional card. This could be for any kind of occasion, really. And then we just uh, will lift up the tape and kind of see what the, what the final look is, and it looks great. Once you lift up the tape, you can see how that just turns into a wonderful occasional card on the front where you have plenty of room for a border and then as well as you can take a ruler on the bottom of your card. So we can just we'll do that quickly so you can kind of see how we might do it. And again, I'll just take some tape and um, put some tape on there just so it doesn't move around because when you're going to do some let's say some messaging or writing on your card, you want to tape it down so it doesn't move on you and it'll keep you from maybe going off the the lines if you're going to create. So what I would do is I just take a, a ruler, a very simple ruler like this, and I might just say, you know what, I'm going to make this message line here a little bit lower than halfway. So if this is halfway, I'll make the message a little bit lower than halfway and I'll put a line across it like this across the card. One line like this, very super lightly, just so you can barely see it. I'll make it a little darker for you so you can see it in the picture. Just so you see how I do it, but I would go lighter than what I'm doing. Okay, you see that, right? Then we go and do another line just like this. Like that. So now you have a two lines and then you're going to put your message right in between those two lines. It'll keep you from going, it'll keep you from tipping like this or tipping like this with your writing. So if you just make two lines and you put your writing in between those two lines, it'll keep you from tipping your message, whatever it might be. So we're just going to put down here, um, let's say uh, for me, uh, I'll go with, um, you fill in your message in there. All you do is you just write it. You can do in script. You can do print, script, whatever you like. Some of you are probably phenomenal um, at handwriting, script, printing. So I'll let you figure that out. And in that... Okay, so you fill in your message there, and then you're all set. And then when you open up the card, you do the same thing. You might take some very, very light pencil lines on the inside of your card here and draw your light pencil line so you, you have a nice um, level line to work on when you're write, doing your writing. 
And also, too, you might, the best, probably best bet is to, I usually look up online for little poems and things. So I'll go on the internet and search out little poems or little sayings that might match the occasion that it might be a birthday, an anniversary, so on and so forth, right? So I look up some of those, and then I just use those for my writing, and that's really about it. And I just make sure that I get all the spelling correct, and then I write it out maybe, or I just use the internet and follow exactly what the internet writing is on my computer screen or my phone. And it might just say, um, happy birthday to such and such a person, or happy anniversary, or, um, you know, whatever the occasion might be. Congratulations for a new job promotion, whatever it is. So you would put that on here, and um, you'd have a complete card. And on this side here, you might tape down a little bit of money. You might, you know, some people give like 5 or 10 or $20. You tape it on the uh, inside of the card with some tape, and you have a little bit of some gift, you know, gifting here, or maybe a... Um, online gift card or something like that so you can put that over on this side and you do your writing on this side and then you have a complete card gift card just like that and it's that simple so you just follow that process and you have it okay so thanks for watching again i always mention if you haven't subscribed right on the right hand side below over here you'll see the subscribe button if you click subscribe what it's going to do is it'll just let you know that a new video has come out that i've created so we can all join together and do some more work together with watercolors. It doesn't obligate you for anything or you're not going to be on, you know, any email lists or anything like that. It's just, um, you just will be notified. Uh, YouTube will notify you uh, that a new video has come out that I've just created. So we can work together and uh, have a great time here on this channel. So I'm hoping you'll follow along and I'm sure your paintings are going to get a lot better. And then also too, we do a little bit of offbeat types, things like this. So we're doing occasional cards this time. Next time we might be doing seascape paintings or boat paintings or the flower paintings the next time, maybe some figure painting or some landscapes. Whatever it is, it's always watercolor. If you watch along all the time each week, you're just going to learn tons of information. You'll learn all of the repetitious things you need to learn for watercolor because watercolor is not an easy medium. But the more you repeat things over and over and you hear things over and over and see things over and over, you will pick it up a lot quicker and faster and your progress will be a lot better and it'll happen quicker for you. So you can get on to better and better paintings. And I know that's what everyone wants to do is create some beautiful paintings and have a great time with watercolor. And most of all, have fun, enjoy it. It's a great uh, medium just to have fun, even if you're not so much um, interested in doing like tremendous amounts of progress and you just want to have fun, then just join along, paint at your own pace and have a good time. That's all it is really. So each person is different and you're the artist. You figure out what your goals are, whether it's just having fun for a little bit of time or whether you want to kind of create a, um, a lot better paintings and maybe get into competitions and galleries or get your work out and maybe sell your uh, paintings. Whatever it is, your goals are fine. You have your own goals as an artist. But here we're just about having fun and we cover all the fundamentals of watercolor as we go. So whether you're just having fun or you're more, a little more serious and you want to be more professional about your watercolors, you'll get the information either way and you can utilize it and uh, run with it. Okay. All right. So I'm going to see you on the next video, everybody. Have a wonderful day, evening, afternoon, morning, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.